So, mistake. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, uh, like I was saying, we're going to move to the next session on the program. Due to this last minute issue, we're going to change the session and we're going to start with the scholarship and capacity building program session. So for that, I, I would first would like to invite, as you know, I send you, sorry for the tons of emails I have been sending you over the last weeks, but uh, there was one in which I was requesting those of you who wanted to show some of your act the activities you, you were doing in two countries and present here into the AGM. So there were four brave people that accepted to do that. So I would like to invite to the States to Daniel, Nikita, Varda and Christina now. So if you can just come up to the States, please. Um, and also, if it's possible now to have the headsets. Okay, good. So just as a little intro, oh, well, one thing before starting that, uh, as, as Hans and Ananda said, please feel free to, to use the, for those of you who ask Twitter, to use the hashtag MPEAGM 2018. I know I'm very handsome, but I don't want to see my picture there for the whole weekend, so just try to, to twist and, and post things because, when I went to the back of the room, I was a little bit scared just looking at me smelling. It was kind of wet, so please tweet and, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah sit, sitting here and also Christina, uh, yeah. So, as I was saying, you know, uh, we in MP, um, two years ago, uh, we were thinking about uh, how we could really do one of the main goals that we have in the DNA of our organization, which was basically helping you to build capacity to develop your skills in order to support better the patients in your own countries. As you know, in, in our position as a European umbrella, sometimes it's difficult to have a direct impact on patients. We were sometimes working in fields such as access, research and development, which certainly has a, an impact for, for the broader community, but we are not so many in touch. And you are the ones who really, in your countries, are doing all a great work of supporting, informing, educating patients, and all these kinds of stuff. And for this reason, in 2016, we decided to develop this capacity building program, which mainly two aims. The first of them, as I said, was giving you some training on those topics that you find useful or beneficial for the myeloma community. And at the same time, uh, even though our budget is limited, giving you a little economical support. So in these two years, we have been able to deliver uh, above 20 grants, 20 grants more than 60,000 euros, and you have been running some some uh, wonderful programs and activities in your own countries, which I think is great. Um, and we're going to keep on doing that. But before, uh, what we wanted to do today is to invite you, and in this case, these four brave advocates, to present the work they have been doing in in their own countries to serve as an example, as a spirit inter exchange. And also, just to let you know that this year we have opened again this program. We are providing 15 grants for those of you who have any kind of program that probably uh, would like to run in your countries. I know some of you have already been granted. I know, Lisa, you have been run this wonderful initiative on the clinical trial search registry in Germany. Lucica, you were holding this, this panel with multiple stakeholders in Romania. So this is open for you, and, and, and yes, please feel free to apply for a grant and for, for the training, because we will be happy to, to support you in any manner that we can. And being said that, I'm going to give the floor to these four, four, four friends and advocates to explain what they have been doing in, in the countries. So first of all, I would like to introduce Daniel, who is talk, going to talk us about the project, the name of the game that they have been running in the uh, Amyloidosis Israel organization. So please, the floor is yours. Uh, hello, everybody. I already said I'm, uh, my name is Daniel Dreamer, and I'm the chair of uh, the Amyloidosis Israel Association. I myself also am an amyloidosis uh, patient for nine years. Uh, we represent about uh, 80, uh, 80 patients of amyloidosis, both AL and familiar amyloidosis in uh, Israel. Um, so it's a real pleasure to stand in front of you and talk about our uh, organization. And I will start with a kind of uh, metaphor. Okay. So uh, this <laughs> the word that describes what we need in order to go on with uh, 
supporting the uh, amyloidosis patients uh, community back in Israel. Uh, yeah. So now let's make a little game. Uh, let's imagine that our city is uh, attacked by the enemy and bombed. Uh, it's not nice, but... Uh, uh, and we as a government, what would be our priorities dealing with this situation? And now it's uh, randomly arranged. Uh, maybe run workshops for mental support of population, organize meetings and uh, give speeches about the patriotic reason to endure the harsh situation, uh, teach the population to hide from bombs, and, uh, and so on and so forth, stop the bombs falling, and uh, this is really randomly arranged. It's not the right uh, priori prioritizing way to do it. Uh, going back to amyloidosis and to our uh, association, uh, I would say that uh, the enemy is amyloidosis. And the bombs falling, uh, in, uh, in my opinion, are faulty di diagnostic and treatment of the disease. So, uh, the right priority should be stop the bombs uh, f falling. What I mean is we have to, the, to do the right diagnostic of the disease, which is uh, lacking for now. It's not so good. And how do we do it? By enhancing knowledge and test facilities for, uh, for physicians. And this is our ongoing activity in the past, in the present, and in the future too. Uh, teach the population hide from bombs means teach patients to be proactive in dealing with the disease. Um, somebody talked about it a uh, couple of uh, minutes ago. It means that uh, because it's such a rare uh, disease, if people are not caring, uh, caring about themselves and keeping track of all their tests and uh, asking the right question, it is not good. I mean, it's not enough a good doctor, but the patient should be his own advocate. We're running workshops for support, uh, mental support of the, of the um, patients. Um, trying to have as many drugs uh, for amyloidosis uh, uh, paid by the um, uh, medical uh, insurance. Uh, yeah, teach, pe teach patients to see the half full glass instead of the half empty glass, which is very important to be optimistic and not be, uh, see only the, have only bad thoughts. Yep. Uh, one, of the, one of the surveys made in 2015 showed that uh, on 443 patients, uh, so, uh, showed that 220 hematologists and 220 cardiologists missed the diagnosis. So uh, each patient had to go through at least four uh, MDs to get the right diagnosis, which is a very bad statistics. So let's go to the basic consumption of our organization. The rarer disease is, the fewer physicians uh, who can diagnose it or treat it. It's a matter of practice, and uh, if you don't see a large number of patients, then really a physician doesn't have an uh, uh, exact procedure how to deal with every patient because every patient is different from another patient. Uh, second rule is to have a, a good relation with an excellent center uh, wherever it is in the world, like in Italy, uh, England, or uh, USA. We keep in touch with most of the physicians in uh, MDs dealing with uh, the disease in Israel, trying to help them uh, to give them more knowledge about the uh, the disease and uh, uh, trying to have the most veteran decision, uh, physician, which has the best, to teach the younger ones. 
um, trying to also to connect the physicians in Israel to excellent centers where they have much more experience, like uh, the center in Italy, which sees about two or three thousand patients a year, and in Israel, the most experienced center maybe has twenty or thirty patients uh, per year, and try to create a forum of uh, MDs that uh, will talk together like uh, every month or two and discuss only about uh, the disease. Uh, the main, uh, the main thing we think about is uh, it was a saying of an ancient uh, Jewish rabbi that said that if I'm not for myself, then who will be for me? So actually, if the patient doesn't help it himself, nobody will help him. It's uh, the most important uh, motto or sentence about amylo amyloidosis patients. Uh, I think uh, that everyone. Okay, at least one member of the, or two members of the organization should learn the, the disease in depth and to be an advisor for all, all other patients, whoever calls and give him the right advice, but it doesn't mean that the patients themselves don't have to learn about, uh, as much as possible about the disease. Uh, they have to keep track of all the results because the doctors don't have the time to track. I mean, they are tracking the results, but not looking at them. So patients should have to see all the results and see if the numbers in the critical tests are going up or down and t talking to the MDs. Uh, also, patients have to be very assertive in, uh, in meetings with, uh, pa with uh, MDs and, write, uh, and ask the right uh, right questions, and even argue if necessary. And be in touch with an excellent center. That's it, it's a short, uh, it's, uh, I try to do it as short as possible. I could talk about it much more time, but uh, thank you. Thanks, Dania. Um, so, um, for for the next one, I would like to invite to the to floor to Christina Modic from LNL from the Slovenian group, and she is going to talk us about this uh, rehabilitation program in Slovenia. Thank you. Okay. Christina. Thank you. Um, hello again. Uh, as I told you, I am representing Slovenian Lymphoma and Leukemia Patient Association, where we also connecting myeloma patients. Um, I'd like to present you uh, our new huge running pilot program, um, Comprehensive Rehabilitation for Blood Cancer Patients. Um, but first of all, um, let's start to say about the project starting point. Uh, blood cancer patients have for sure significant a significant need for the comprehensive rehabilitation during and after treatment. Uh, and patients uh, in Slovenia uh, have poor accessibility to comprehensive rehabilitation and systematic organized rehabilitation. It's quite a problem uh, in our country. Um, and uh, we know that significant need of patients, uh, that is significant need of patients for uh, physical, nutrition, and psychological support and counseling. And in May 2017, uh, we got a huge opportunity because our Ministry of Health published a public tender uh, for the period of 2017 to 2019 um, on the field of, um, uh, uh, of the rehabilitation, comprehensive care, and then we apply with our pilot program and we won. Uh, for two years we want 100,000 uh, euros for, the, for this program uh, and we were really very happy because uh, we, uh, we can start it. Uh, what are the benefits of this program for the patients? 
uh, the systematically organized comprehensive care uh, and rehabilitation prevents uh, or successfully eliminates additional problems caused by aggressive treatment and significant, significantly increase uh, the patient's quality of life during and after treatment. Uh, what is very important, not just after treatment, but also during treatment, as well as aids them in successfully returning to their social and, work, uh, and working environment. Uh, who are the program implementers? The program leader is our association. Our huge partner is Association of Hematologists of Slovenia. We prepared the, prog the pilot program together and also we work on this program now and running program together. Uh, our direct implementers of the program are hematologists, uh, also some oncologists, uh, nurses, physiotherapists, kinesio kinesio <laughs> kinesiologists, uh, clinical dietitian, clinical psychologists, social worker, and of course our lay advisors. Uh, the program, as I said, is co-financed uh, co by the Ministry of Health and by the pharma companies. And as you will see further on, um, we are starting with huge campaign, awareness campaign and fundraising campaign in Slovenia. And we will ask also our public to help us with this pilot program. Uh, who can join the program? Uh, uh, the program can join uh, the program can join patients uh, patients with certain types of blood cancer uh, who are in the process of active treatment um, those are patients with myeloma lymphoma CLL uh, and AML and patients after the transplantation um, of the bone marrow transplantation each patient stays in the program for six months and right now, from October till now, we have 27 patients um, in, involved in the program, and 13 of these um, uh, of those are uh, patients with myeloma. Uh, every Monday, uh, two new patients um, uh, joined the program, and of course, one or two left the program because they finished the program. What are the program goals? Uh, one goal is empowerment of 120 patients in the period of two years, um, better outcome of the treatment of those patients, faster recovery, better quality of life of the patients, and making it easier to return to the social and working environment. And of course, less sick leaves due to the treatment consequences when they get back to the work. Uh, the program consists of three modules. Uh, one is a physical module. Uh, it means that patients uh, go uh, and have a regular uh, physical group exercising uh, with physiotherapist or kine kine kinesiologist. It depends on the, uh, patient, from patient to patient. Um, they have also exercise at home every day and make uh, and record uh, everything. Uh, then we have nutrition module. Uh, it means assessment of the nutritional status of each patient and patient get a nutrition plan with ongoing monitoring. So um, everything is uh, monitoring from time to time. And then we have a psychosocial mo module. Um, it means assessment of uh, psychosocial status. Uh, patients uh, have uh, tests and conversation with uh, clinical psychologist, and then a patient join um, a support group. Um, <clears throat> we also have some other forums of counseling for patients to support all three modules. Uh, it means that we have uh, regular monthly group con con uh, con uh, consultations with experts, some kind of workshops uh, on the topic of the nutrition, um, physical activities, psychosocial status, um, uh, and of course also the management of the problems which are caused by uh, treatment or recovery. And then um, patients can get also individual consultations with experts if they need it. 
uh, and consultation with our program coordinator, who is my colleague, Brina. She is, um, I can say, lead this program and coordinate this program. And if you, if you will have uh, any questions, you can give it to me and also to my colleague, Brina. Uh, what are all activities for one patient? They have to be, um, uh, they have to be uh, very active. They have to follow the instruction of the clinical dietitian regarding diet. They have to visit uh, physical group exercise once a week. And of course, they have to exercise at home every day. Uh, they have to visit workshops with experts. Uh, and then they have to visit uh, gr um, uh, a group consultation with a psychologist once a month. And what is very important, they have to keep a diary and record all the observations. You can see our diary here on the picture. And on the picture, you can see a small group um, of our patients on their ex uh, when they have their exercising. Um, if necessary, they make, indi uh, as I said, they make indi uh, consultation with experts and they keep in regular contact with our coordinator, Brina. Um, to make some conclusions, um, comprehensive rehabilitation for patients with blood cancer is extremely needed and has a great value to treatment outcomes uh, and patients' quality of life. Um, comprehensive rehabilitation is currently available only in Slovenia, I mean, is available only for limited number of patients with specific blood cancer types under the pilot program. And we expect that the results of the pilot program uh, will demonstrate the importance and need of rehabilitation for the patients. Um, and for the treatment outcome and quality of life of the patients and uh, quicker return to work and uh, to work um, environment. And when the pilot program finished, we will strive for availability of this program also for all patients uh, with blood cancer in the whole Slovenia and finally also for all patients with cancer in Slovenia. Uh, and as I told you, uh, we would like to support our pilot program to be effective and to give really good results. And uh, we, need to, we need some more money. So uh, in May, we are starting with huge uh, awareness campaign and fundraising campaign in Slovenia, uh, Back to Life. Uh, and we asking our public, Slovenian public, to help patients blood, uh, with blood cancers back to life. Uh, and we will uh, ask them to give five euro um, for this program. And we are sure that we will, uh, that we will have uh, success and we will reach all of our goals of our program. Um, this is a uh, working, um, this is not a final version, but uh, I, I can show it with you. And this is a man who would like to have his, back, his life back uh, with his family. And um, I, I think that we will have a good success also with the campaign and with the program. So thank you very much. Okay, so our next speaker is going to be um, Barba, if I'm correct. Uh, she's going to present us about this, uh, this, uh, this program. I think you, you apply for the capacity building program and this is one of, the, of your programs, so it's about the responsible patient. So uh, Barba, you, you're welcome to have the floor. Thank you. If I'm a second. It's about this one. It's very, very similar. Yeah, I mean, the template is the same, but no, no, no. Is this yours? Mm -hmm. no? Oh, sorry. This is no, no. Sorry, this is about Nikita. This is Nikita. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just they were they, they were both using the same slide. Sorry about that. So Nikita, I give you yes, the floor. So, but <laughs> last not least, unless whether you want to present that. Yes, about that. yes. But I think that uh, we are very close in uh, uh, empowering. At least uh, is a. Key word of next presentation. Uh, 
so my experience in hematology is um, very impressive from my life and I'm uh, excited of its success uh, and problems. And um, I found that the main problem is responsibility of the patient. There is no other way to uh, empower patient than to give them understanding that they have to do their, not only their life by themselves, but also their medical records. They have to take uh, in their hand, in their hands, medical records. And there is no reason to uh, uh, sacrifice uh, medical doctor mission. It's simple human behavior to use reasonable intellectual uh, algorithm, as it name now, to fulfill case history. And we have to inspire person to be partner in this work. Uh, in Russia, during, the, during my practice, we have dramatic uh, period of losing uh, paper medical records and to enter in a uh, dramatic uh, period of mixed uh, uh, documentation, both in paper and in electron. It makes the uh, situation more, much more difficult. And now uh, I told you that we have a lawyer with me. Uh, uh, doctors doesn't want to write uh, to fulfill uh, medical record because they afraid to be uh, to have problem with uh, with law because uh, official organization our uh, administration is looking for process against doctor to uh, make uh, society uh, to ins to ensure society that they are very uh, caring about them and that they are very strong, uh, strongly defend their life against the doctors. It's a very uh, difficult and painful situation. So what we uh, have to do now, we uh, have to use uh, new technologies. And it's uh, certainly, it's, uh, I don't remember what is there. Uh, uh, it's a smartphone. Next generation of human beings will uh, have all their problems, all their disease, uh, their aging and their death with smartphone in their hands. It's the main instrument of life. Uh, so we uh, think that uh, via this instrument we have to teach patients to participate in their medical history. And uh, uh, this the problem is how to involve patients uh, and how to involve doctors who, as I told you, are afraid to write. They prefer to speak with patients through telephone and to, they imagine that these words disappeared in air, but it's not true again. So uh, we started with uh, most um, uh, perspective patient, as we thought, with uh, diabetic patient and with pregnant women. Uh, this group are younger and uh, they expect to be interested in monitoring their vital sign of disease. 
but it's also not very simple. So I think that uh, uh, though we have not very successful sea history with, uh, 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 with patients of my uh, hospital of National Center of Hematology, that now we should uh, return to them and try to inspire uh, serious but already using computer equipment patient with myeloma to follow and monitoring their own uh, vital signs, which is uh, protein level and uh, immune uh, chemistry of serum and urine. It's very important and clear uh, signs and uh, misdiagnostic, which we discuss is the reason uh, hope ha happens because doctors not recognize the high level of blood uh, of protein in urine as reason for immunochemistry. In Russia still we have the only high level laboratory in our center. Uh, it all happened in my eyes then mm, great scientist uh, I believe our, the person who opened the first cancer-specific protein, alpha fetal protein, he created for us the technique of immunochemistry uh, concentration of, uh, of myeloma-specific um, uh, proteins. And now it's work, but it's the only laboratory in the country. So the problem is how to involve patients. Uh, I think that it's one of the main problem of all patient organization. It's the instrument we can give to any person because uh, to write text is the most human behavior in the world. We, we have uh, one independent journalist in Russia, Dmitry Bukov. He's very aggressive for government uh, and uh, very reactive to uh, events, but he also create eternal phrase, I think. He wrote, the God created human being to have something to read. You understand? All the text in the world, except DNA, written by a human being. And God is interesting. So I think that now our main uh, goal is to uh, present to God our medical records. Please help us. So mm, I'll be happy to, pres to send you all my text, uh, but you see that I told you practically all I what have been written here. And uh, this instrument also have, mm, uh, you see about, I think that I didn't, uh, this is our classic picture we did on Excel uh, 20 years ago. And it's uh, the still picture how we imagine uh, modern case history should be. So we, as a Google map, uh, we, have, we should have all data integrated in uh, one uh, vision. And doctor and patient should recognize situation by recognition of picture, image of disease. Uh, uh, so I'll send you the modern picture. They are not so beautiful, but they have automatic monitoring of blood, uh, uh, sugar, of pulse, of uh, uh, different simple um, signs 
of health. But we have to add our blood uh, patient uh, monitoring events as well. So please do it for your patients, for your uh, people, uh, for your friends, and for yourself. You have to understand that now the only uh, creature who will take care about your all lifelong medical history is you. I can tell that such uh, behavior possible because in my experience there is great doctors who takes care of their patient during all their life, during all their disease. It was possible in previous stage of human culture. But now it became much more complex, much more data, and each person has to do it by himself. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nikita. And last but not least, and now uh, now I'm correct. I'm inviting to the floor to Vada, who's talking about the worst of power, foreign power in the patient. Yes. The Hi, everybody. Many familiar faces, and I feel like uh, we are uh, really uh, one big family. Uh, just to give you a little bit introduction about AMEN, AMEN is the only myeloma organization in Israel which established in 2005. We are doing a lot of activities for uh, our patients, and uh, one area that we are covering is support groups for our patients, which we all do uh, in three different uh, geographical areas every month. In these uh, groups, they meet each other, they mingle with each other, and uh, they have some uh, professional uh, lecture, like from a doctor or other related uh, area. And we have also the hotline, which uh, is activated by our patients. And we understood over the years that uh, there is a need for a special uh, workshop especially for new patients and for patients that are going uh, to a relapse. And uh, we decided that uh, we will uh, establish a, a special uh, workshop for them because we have a limited uh, budget. Uh, we identify uh, some uh, uh, members from our uh, patients, uh, which went uh, through a, uh, oh, wait. Okay, okay. Uh, the facilitators, as I said, are many staff members that went to a, a seminar. Uh, and this seminar was uh, based on the WCC model, it's, it's an in integrative uh, intervention model that uh, talks about the family medical approach, the practice approach, and the approach developed by wellness community. Uh, we established a special workshop, which is uh, for patients and their caregivers. Also caregivers are coming for this uh, workshop. They are about, we have about a group each, se each uh, seminar is for about 14 to 16 people. It's a very small group. They are going through six sessions, uh, three hours every session. Uh, we publish, uh, we, the publication of this workshop is through our Facebook group, through a website, through emails. And uh, right now, up to now, we maintain the two seminars, and the third one we starting uh, this month. The main idea of this uh, program is uh, to uh, provide uh, our uh, myeloma patients and their families tools to cope with this chronic disease, to improve their quality of life, 
and to teach them how to manage the disease. Uh, when I talk uh, about how to manage disease, our former, uh, former uh, head of uh, board of uh, Amen, she always said, I want to manage my disease. The disease is not managing my life. And this is the point. We teach our patients how to read the blood test and all other tests. We teach them how to ask the right questions of, uh, from the physician and how to get all the information that they need because we believe that patients that control their disease, that they take, they manage their disease, they feel much better because they feel they can control the situation. The second uh, topic that we are going, uh, do, uh, going over in this uh, uh, seminar is all the topic of the side effects. As we know, there are many side effects and not always the doctor has the time to go with the patient about um, all the side effects. And we talk about diarrhea, we talk about neuropathy, thrombosis, rash, fatigue, anemia, and all these side effects that you, you know about them. And we think it's very important that somebody will tell them what they are going to go through. And to talk with experienced people that went over it already. All the, all the topic of interpersonal relationship, the connection, we believe that there is a connection be, uh, between the body and the soul and that the patients need a lot of support from the family and the surrounding, uh, and the surrounding along the disease. And the sense of feel belonging is something that uh, don't let them feel lonely. And we believe that uh, all the activities that they continue, should continue alongside the disease. Another topic is the relationship in the work with the workforce. This is a very, you know, this topic is relevant uh, for people which are in their 30s, 40s, 60s, 50s. And it's very important topic. In Israel, we have an NGO which is called Caregivers. And one of the missions is to go to a to different uh, workplaces and uh, talk with the people there and uh, build a special program, not only for the patients, but also for the, for, uh, for the caregivers. We believe that our patients have need to make their boss a partner for their disease in order to be able to uh, build a new routine and to continue to work, which is very important. The other topic is all the relationship with the kids, how to tell the kids, how to deal with their parents, how to deal with your body, which is another topic that uh, this seminar is dealing with. And all the area of nutrition, sport, hobbies, and other activities that the patient should uh, do in order to go back to kind of routine. Now, the outcomes. We already had like about, uh, I guess, 30 people that went to this seminar. And uh, what they is, is told us that there is a significant change in their mental state once they began to take control of their disease and they uh, learned how to cope with this chronic situation and they helped themselves to go to a new routine, they felt much better. And also, uh, you know, they learned a lot from each other and they got support and they knew how to get more support from their family and uh, not to be lonely with the disease. The next actions, we are uh, going to hold uh, like three seminars each year in three in different geographical areas. We want to make uh, meetings of those that uh, graduated from this program to meet with them like once in a quarter. 
we understand today that we have to hold separate meeting for caregivers and this is our next mission to have uh, some uh, seminars, separate seminars for caregivers. Uh, we need to train more facilitators and these facilitators we believe have to be myeloma patients. And uh, that's what we do right now. We try to identify and uh, more uh, volunteers to uh, lead this, uh, this and other activities. Uh, just uh, some pictures. Here you see Shlomit. Shlomit is one of the, our uh, facilitators. And Shoshi, she's also from uh, our uh, board. And these two people, after the session, made themselves uh, new shirts. As you see, multiple myeloma, love, win, believe, faith, courage, all these words. Thanks. Well, thank you very much, Vada. Thank you very much, all of you. So before we are proceeding with this open discussion and this dialogue, I would like to, to ask you, the audience, if you have any questions or something that you would like to share. Yes, uh, this might be the moment. So, Sophia, yeah. Hello, uh, Farda, I have a question for you. Uh, why did you decide to, uh, to split between myeloma patients and caregivers? What was the need to, uh, to do two different meetings? Oh, I didn't understand well. No, no. Yeah, yeah, you understood correctly. In this uh, empowerment uh, seminar, we invite also caregivers, but we understood that we need to do separate meetings. Another doesn't connect to this seminar for caregivers because caregivers cannot talk about all these issues, all the issues mm -hmm. next to the patients, and they believe that they need different sessions. So we are going... Yeah. Caregivers told us that they feel they can't talk about their own difficulties in front of the patients. Yes. They are trying to save. They, they feel that they don't see themselves. They don't see their mm -hmm. own difficulties. And when they feel it, they don't dare to put it on the table. So we realize that if we will give them a, diff a special seminar for them, they will be able to speak to open everything and to put on the table all their difficulties, okay? It's not instead this uh, seminar. It's uh, something additional uh, seminar that we, th we are trying to establish right now. Thank you. Is there any other question to, yeah, turn. It was really wonderful to hear the presentations and I'm very happy to see that so much is going on when it comes to cancer rehabilitation in the blood field because there is a huge need. And I was curious, Christina, about your experience because you mixed several diagnoses, some that are, might be chronical and some that are curable. And what is your experience with mixing that? I'm curious because we had a training program in Norway for younger blood cancer patients where we had all our diagnosis together and we saw that it was difficult for those with multiple myeloma who had a um, shorter life horizon to be together with those who were struggling with severe side effects, for instance, from GVHD, from heavy treatment, because it was two different worlds. What's your experience? Uh, maybe my colleague Brina will later on um, uh, talk more about it because she's all the time in the connection with the patients. But um, now in first six months, uh, we had mostly chronic uh, patients. So um, they have quite similar, they have quite similar needs. Um, but now I think um, we have two young patients also with, um, uh, with uh, Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's different. But we'll see, we will see what will happen to, um, uh, during the, this pilot program. And we are recording all our um, outcomes. Uh, and we'll see, maybe, I don't know, Brina, do you have um, some different, some experience? It's, 
you know, it's for six months, so uh, we have mostly patients with myeloma, uh, chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia, uh, and, um, and, and lymphoma. Yeah, the, the younger one just um, entered the program, so the, um, we don't have so much experience yet, but uh, we will see. I think that maybe in the future we could uh, split but to now it's the same program for different diagnoses. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions in the room? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, uh, thank you all for the uh, for your interesting presentation. I have a question for both the Israeli and patient groups. Uh, <coughs> just curious, uh, do you work also together uh, uh, as as both patient groups, uh, for example, in in meetings um, uh, in, in Israel for patients? I think the, the simple quest, uh, answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say that, but no. Okay, the, the, the amyloidosis uh, organization just was established like last year, no? Uh, November, a year ago. November 2016. Yeah, okay, a year ago. We talk about it, not yet. We didn't uh, any collaboration yet, but we will do. Nope. Thank you. Yeah, Sophia also there. Just to add that the, the, thanks to the weather, we'll have a very nice cocktail reception and dinner in the terrace, so this may be the <laughs> beginning of a new friendship. So. <laughs> At last, uh, Christine, <laughs> Christina, I, I think your, your program is fabulous. And uh, it's one of the issues that uh, our, our newborn association is dealing with. It's uh, the back to life problem. So uh, I'm really thrilled with, uh, with everything that you have uh, uh, presented. And uh, I didn't really get if this uh, Back to Life campaign, fundraising campaign, you have already done it or you're preparing it, uh, the fundraising? We will uh, start in May. In May? Yes, in the middle of the May. Um, Can you explain a little more about how you're going to address, uh, who are you going to address this fundraising campaign, which is amazing because you're not addressing for um, a certain disease, you're just going to address for back to life in cancer, which is something yes. really amazing. Uh, we you. would like to aware how important is rehabilitation for the patients with blood cancer, but not so with blood cancer for all patients, because you know, me, you, everybody will need rehabilitation in our life. So we will um, ask people to help us with this pilot program to support um, uh, blood cancer patients in this program uh, because together we will do for all of us a lot because uh, if this pilot program will be successful, will show, uh, will show good results, then uh, it will be applicable, you know, in other uh, cancers, in other chronic diseases, so this is the goal. And um, our uh, agency is preparing really a uh, good communication campaign. So uh, we'll have uh, very focused communication, very um, you know, touchable communication. Uh, and we are sure that um, almost every Slovene will uh, donate five euros for this program. General public yes, yes, general public campaign. Yes, from 18 years till 99. So we, will, we are focused to all. Um, what are the expectations? Sorry? You raise how much money you... Uh, uh, now we get from the Ministry of Health, we get 110,000 euros, uh, and we need additional 50,000 oh, and okay. uh, f for two years. So we are sure that uh, yeah. we will okay. succeed. Nice. Good. Is there another question there, Tony? Yeah. I, um, I have another question because this program is so wonderful, uh, Christina, that you're telling us about. But I was wondering in your country or in the other countries who are represented on stage, 
What kind of focus is it on cancer rehabilitation from the public that's offered to cancer patients? Is it so that there is none? So it's up to patient organization to arrange it as you're doing? Or how is it? How does it look? As I told, the problem in Slovenia is that we don't have systematically organized rehabilitation for blood cancer patients. And we started together with the Society of Hematologists of Slovenia, this pilot program, to show that it's important. Uh, um, it, it's a big need. So we started, yes. I don't know, how is your, in, in your country? Is uh, uh, part of the treatment program? Well, we have uh, been working together with um, people, different nurses and different doctors and researchers who are involved with cancer rehabilitation because in Norway there is a lot of uh, offer when it comes to rehabilitation. But when it comes to cancer rehabilitation, it's a rather new field yeah. and there really isn't very much specific for blood cancer patients. But what we have tried to do is to make a scoring system to determine which uh, blood cancer patient needs rehabilitation because so far in Norway it's been very random who actually gets help and who doesn't. So if you've been lucky talking to somebody and you say, oh, oh is, is, does rehabilitation exist? I didn't know. I think thought it was just for older people with hip problems. So that means that the word is out there, but there is no systematic. So we try to bring systematic, and there is no research going on at the largest hospital in Oslo. And also we hope that this um, uh, way, this tool to, to sort of determine who needs rehabilitation will put a pressure on the governments to say that we really need to build up, we need special care for these patients because the treatment is so heavy and it takes such a long time for people to return back to normal life. Mm -hmm. And also you could save money, a lot of studies have shown giving yeah. people rehabilitation mm -hmm. because they come earlier to work and people who are old who doesn't go back to work, they could be more self-sufficient back home so they don't need that much public help anymore. Yes, you're right. <laughs> sorry, I know, no problem, that's good. <laughs> to you, Christina, sorry. Uh, so how did you choose the patients that would engage in this uh, pilot study? W w was that the hematologists? Uh, that yes, the hematologists they say, chose the patients. Uh, this one is the right one. The right one. And then um, uh, the patient come uh, every Monday, we have this... Um, um, consultations for the patients and then patient come has uh, we need two or two hours for one patient to to measure uh, uh, his physical um, uh, ability or how to say then uh, measure uh, their um, from not, uh, not Nutritionist yeah, and the, you know yeah, the other um, yes and the others and then uh, uh, when we have all the tests and all the records uh, our hematologist uh, say yes he is for the program or no he is for example too bad to go to exercising and yes. yeah but in in the future after. Uh, you, the, uh, the pilot ended and you are going to implement it in a further, in a broader way. How are you going to engage the patients? What's your idea? Our idea is that it's, uh, uh, it's it, it organized systematically like uh, Tune say. Uh, you know that um, every doctor... Um, always through the doctors. Yes, is always through the doctors. Okay. Thank you. Roman. Again, Christina. <laughs> <coughs> it will be not uh, a question. It will be that confirmation. I uh, did alone what you propose for the patient. And my doctor, I am so happy, uh, saw this uh, necessity to force patient to, to work, uh, as you said that uh, you have to take care about you as a first person. And uh, I've never felt 
so good as uh, now. I, s- no. I have my mm-hmm. uh, personal training. Even I was, I didn't know that I am myeloma patient maybe 10 years, 15 years ago. I wasn't uh, so happy with my body as it is, is, it, as it is now. Mm-hmm. I can lift 100 kilograms. I have my broken uh, backbones and the myeloma in my, uh, in my bones, in my hips, but uh, I can manage it. So uh, mm, this is the right direction, I think. Super. Thanks a lot. Nice. Super. Well, great. We accept this confirmation. Yeah. Follow you. <laughs> May, maybe can Brina told you uh, two patients are finished. How successful was the program? Brina, can you, uh, in few words, Because Brina is really in uh, all the time in the contact with patients, with uh, experts. Uh, yeah, the, the two patients that already finished the program, they showed um, increase in um, hand grip, in, um, length, uh, in, in every measurable um, uh, numbers from uh, um, physiatric uh, tests, and they really felt better. Um, they said they have better quality of life and also the psychological tests um, were better and one of the patients um, finished the program as uh, he finished the um, treatment but still um, got a better result. So um, it was very, um, it, it really showed um, that um, the program is effective, I think. And everything is evidence-based. Me- uh, we measured everything, so it's not just uh, I feel good. So, yeah, we really, really, we really wanted to um, have these tests in the beginning and in the end, so we can really show um, mm-hmm. the um, the difference and the, um, yeah. the founders that it's uh-huh. really effective. Yes, with the comparison from the beginning and at the end. Good. Oh yeah, Biba. Okay, <coughs> Biba. I'm sorry for Anna because she's rushing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anna. Yeah. We can help. <laughs> Not now. My question is: uh, Congratulations for all that you are doing. It's very hard, and we know that. But my question is, uh, we, kn- we all know that the psychosocial support is very important in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in a cure. But uh, uh, are you struggling, each of you in your country, with the access to new treatments? Because we, we can support, psycho- we can give psychosocial support to the patient, but the first thing is treatment. In Macedonia, we are struggling with the new treatment, access to treatments. So, I mean, we can work and we are working on psychosocial support, but my uh, question is how you manage that in your countries? Um, I think it's a different topic that uh, the MP plans to uh, talk about it later, but we, we didn't talk uh, here about access to drugs because it's a big, uh, it's a, another area of all, but we talk about all the other things that we can do next or besides the treatment itself. I that was the... My question was, do you have a problem with access? I think everybody has a problem <laughs> to Slovenia, access and we we're doing yeah. a lot of activities. I know that we in Israel plan to show you uh, what we do as far as access to treatment, but it will be a thing only tomorrow. I can say for Slovenia, we don't have any problems till now with the access to new, new treatments. We are up to date. And that's why we can uh, prepare such projects. Uh, we are uh, upgrading co- uh, care, comprehensive care, rehabilitation, because we don't have problems with access to treatment. So we are happy and hopefully it will stay like this uh, for a long time. About Russia, uh, we are not happy, but I can say the story of 
ac access for new treatment because my chief uh, was director of the National Center and leader of the uh, hematology when a Gliwiec arise. The, you know it's the first drug for uh, new treatment. For, Gliwiec. for, for CML. CML. Yes. And uh, he accepted from the company drug for uh, 150 patients. And then companies say, well, it's time to pay. And my chief called to Minister of Health and say, hey, brother, you have problem. You can't execute these people. You should kill them. Uh, to put them in prison, it's not enough. Because to stop treatment <laughs> is the death. So please, take care. And uh, Minister of Health, it was such person, Zurabov, it was first Minister of Health, not physician in Russia. He was uh, good enough to accept this proposal. Mm -hmm. And next step was with uh, fact, factor eight for hemophilia patients. It was very expensive as well treatment. And also my chief sent patients to uh, parliament and say they will climb on their uh, uh, broken legs to you if you are not support the program. And now we have dramatic change because government in all disgusting problem of our country paying uh, two billions uh, dollar, dollars for program of new innovative drugs and all active patients able to get it. Nice. It's, it's very strange. And it's story of single patient or a single person who forced it. And then uh, groups of, of course, pharmacy supported and patient organization. It's a great story. Are there any more questions? Someone wants to add something else? Okay, so I, I, I will then make one, well, maybe first to, to you, but it's open to, to everyone. As, as I was saying this, first of all, I am quite amazed about the great activities that you have developed. And I know that some of you are also working in some very good activities. And I was wondering, from my position, from our position, the role of MP, what do you think are the most challenging or the most uncovered needs that the myeloma and the amyloidosis community has and how do you think an umbrella like MP can support and help you to, to really run programs and activities to, to solve these unneeded issues? Some food for thought. If someone from the audience wants to, wants to participate. Maybe from the amyloidosis point of view is uh, mainly uh, MD, raising the uh, enhancement of the knowledge of the MDs. It's, it's a problem. I mean, I'm, we're trying to do it all the time, but uh, it's something maybe, you know, th they're the same doctors. The doctors dealing with amyloidosis and with uh, myeloma, but myeloma is not so rare like uh, amyloidosis. Mm. And it's maybe easier to diagnose than amyloidosis. So here's a something which can, uh, the big organizations like MP can help us in achieve this goal. Yeah, in that sense, I take the chance to, to inform all of you. You know, on Sunday, there will be the General Assembly, which is for, for full members only. But in parallel, we are running a session on AL amyloidosis. And also, we are having a planning on to see how MP can help the amyloidosis community in some kind of way. As, I, as you, many of you know, AL amyloidosis and myeloma are quite well linked. So I would just a proposal for you, for especially for those members in which two delegates are attending, maybe you can split be between the General Assembly and the ALM Dosis Session, because this is something that also has an impact for myeloma patients. And, and in that sense, it will be great 
to show what we're planning to do for MPE, but also to hear from you to see exactly what, because we are quite new in the field. And, I think and, and one more think thing is that actually 50% of the myeloma patients <laughs> Uh, 15. 15. Okay. 15 are developing uh, sooner or later amyloidosis, so we have a lot of uh, common common things. Yeah, yeah that's it. So, no uh, well, uh, I think that Rabbi was right. If you are not for yourself, there is nobody can help you. Uh, it's uh, and uh, our patient is awake people. They understand that their life is very expensive, and, but n all of them, uh, practically, in reality, wants to live. You know, uh, it was uh, in the beginning of perestroika, uh, 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 it was a lot of more freedom and discussion, uh, discussion about health, a doctor's help uh, murdering, uh, euthanasia. And uh, journalists came to our institute and say, hey, we have freedom to, for you to, to die. Let's, let's give it to your patient. And I say, well, go to our reanimation and ask them. They all want to inspire once more. It's the human being. There is no uh, people who want to stop respiration. Uh, in reality, it's it's so done. So uh, I think that we have to uh, to help people to continue. It's our mission. Thank you. Is there any other final remark before closing the session? Uh, Hans. Hans, yeah. Just want to make uh, one comment on what you said uh, to raise awareness um, uh, also to the medical doctors uh, uh, about the relation between uh, AL amyloidosis and um, um, uh, myeloma. Uh, well, uh, I must say we, we are in close contact uh, uh, since, uh, especially since the last year with the European medical doctor uh, group who are focused on myeloma. Uh, the group I mentioned in my introduction, introduction that has also a, a congress at the moment, but in Torino, uh, and they have also a, a quite similar program like we have uh, a myeloma pro program and also an AL amyloidosis program, um, and um, they have there. Uh, we we had a preparing discussion also uh, with them uh, just the day before our meeting, um, uh, and. Um, in 2020, 20, they, they will have, have their next meeting, and we discussed if we could combine things uh, more. So uh, we are developing more and more uh, um, pretty close uh, connections with the uh, leading medical doctors in Europe at the moment, also on the AL amyloidosis side, absolutely. Uh, may I have a comment? Uh, I, uh, my first uh, foreign training was in MD Anderson Cancer Center in the United States in uh, 1989, I jumped there. And they found that they have such size of case history, enormous. I expected that they'll find something unbelievable. But there was only accounts. Money, money, money about <laughs> how many they pay to. <laughs> but I found the real concentration of interesting and very Im inspiring information. It was letters of treatment doctor to those who, primary doctors who sent the patient. Uh, the problem that there was slightly adhesive because they were very sweet, very sweet, and it was difficult to, to open it. But information was very, precisely, strictly described, and the situation of patient was presented in very interesting and uh, complex way. So I think that it's very important uh, channel from 
the specialist who treat patients, they have to return them to their primary doctor with thanks and with uh, respect to their action that they send them and to ensure that if they will do the same, they will save life and it's their responsibility that they did it. Wow. So let's inspire specialists to return their success mm -hmm. and to share their Super. success with uh, primary doctors. I think that it's an important way. Super. Super. Bravo. Well, well said. Okay, so it seems that we have reached the final of the session. I, I would really like to thank uh, Daniel, Vada, Nikita, and Christina for your great contributions. So thank, thank you. For the action for the past. Now, we're going to have a, a coffee break, which is going to be set up the outside of the room, just to give you an update. We are still trying, I mean, I was not just looking on Facebook and Twitter, I was just communicating with, with my <laughs> colleague Anna, because we're still holding for the doctor to see whether she might be available for the next uh, session or not. Uh, we'll probably extend the coffee break for half an hour instead of 50 minutes, and as soon as we know whether it's possible to have the session, we will let you know, okay? So thank you very much, thanks.